let's try to do another 5S blue screen of death. So I already did this one time. I have my horrible video before my cool new setup. And uh, here's a 5S that, that uh, came in that just says that it's uh, got, let's see. It says BSOD problem from the wrong size screw. Screen has been replaced with a new one. So there we go. It's blue screening, boot looping. That's classic presentation for the long screw damage, which it may or may not have. Let's take a look. So we're going to open this sucker up. And the blue screen of death, I think um, I've gotten a lot better at it. Most people that have been doing it for a while have gotten, you know, some tips and tricks to be a little bit... Um, better at it. So let's get into this phone. Alright, so we're going to take off the battery. God damn it, Christy! Now I don't have a screwdriver! Hmm, I'm going to have to use a, I'm gonna have to use a plan, plan things that you screwdriver. could remember um, from being a kid. Like, all the phone numbers of your friends, <laughs> which, uh, and also, oh, <laughs> yes, your friend Jenny. How many people have ever tried to call Jenny? <laughs> I mean, what a horrible phone number to get, like, that, that, uh, you know, 8675309 in every area code must be absolutely discontinued. I wonder if that's sort of, you know, dried, dried off now. That'd be pretty funny. That would be pretty funny. What's your new cell phone number? Your number is 585-867-5309. What? I bet that number gets requested. I bet it does too. All right, let's take a look under the microscope. This is definitely long screw damage. So looking in the screw hole, that's classic for this problem. You know, that's, you can, you can absolutely see a uh, depression in there. Oh, we are not dealing with microscope drift today. I have had it with that. All right. Oh, you can keep it now. <laughs> okay. Screw all damage. Let's get that bracket up off of here. Christy, when are you going to start doing things like uh, long screw damage? Um, so, that I, so that I can retire. And I can just sit here and make jokes. And So YouTube fans, look for the fun training of Christy in August. Mommy Fix It Plus. Okay, so we're also going to take a look in the bottom uh, right screw, which looks okay. That's good, because a lot of times you can have damage in both screws, and that'll cause sort of different effects. But it's a real drag if you don't expect that up front, especially if you sort of, you know, we quote, like, solution fee, so everything's going to work or no fee. So then you're going to be doing two BSOD repairs on one device. So it's good to know that up front. Alright, so we're going to press down on this. Bracket is off. I toss that bracket. There's really no reason. It doesn't do anybody any good for it to be there. It's just going to tempt the next guy to put in the wrong screw. Alright, I'm going to use a little bit of braid to clean up that circle for a second. Okay. And this is a very classic blue screen of death presentation. So let's get really close to that. A lot of times it's easier to see if you put a little bit of alcohol on the, on the area. That is absolutely classic. You can see the um, 
the full circle of, you know, crushed into the board damage. So the next goal is to excavate. And this is where you really, you know, this is really sort of the, the key or the trick of, a, of an easy BSOD repair. So you want to, you want to get really good at your excavation here so that you don't actually cause more damage while you are exposing these traces. So you can use whatever tool you like. Lots of people use different things. What do you mean? He's fine. What's he doing? So here I'm using a very sharp X-Acto knife blade. Um, sometimes I use the, the, you know, the, the hot tweezers themselves and just sort of burn it up a little bit. And you want to kind of make decisions depending on what your damage looks like. You might want to remove all or part of this ring and that's okay. This one is kind of coming up a little bit anyway. Let's just take it off. Now when I cut through here, I'm cutting these, um, let me back out a little bit so you can see that. I'm cutting these little ground traces that lead to those components. So I'll need to sort of lay a um, connector to ground at the top there later. But it's fine to just take this off. And we'll just do, we'll do that much. Okay, let's get back down to zoom in. Let me add a little bit more light here. Yeah, go on a walk with Underdog. With Dad, yeah. Yeah? That's pretty lame. Okay, that's enough excavation. Let's use some alcohol to see what we got here. It's kind of like a big reveal, like the swan. Do you guys remember that show? Christy, did you watch the swan? I did not. You did not? Well, it was pretty, pretty over the top <laughs> where they would take these people and pretty much slice them and dice them and then have a big, amazing uh, reveal, which was pretty questionable. Okay. All right, so now we can see a lot of beautiful traces all running around here and um, clear and obvious trace damage. Let's see if you guys can, let's back it up a little bit so that you can get enough light on the screen to see this. All the other YouTube channels there's not there's like quiet background or techno music but this is sort of um, a chaos soundtrack find it really helpful for um, repair it makes everybody understand why my most of my videos are done at like 3 a.m. all right so they, we have a broken oh you can't see any of that
<laughs> okay, so there's a broken trace right here. That's pretty broken all the way. We'll want to sort of jump that there and there. And then honestly, it looks like the worst damage is down here at the bottom, and it looks like this one looks pretty bad. It looks like there's a break on all these traces. That's pretty, pretty deep. A lot of times there'll only be one or two that are broken. That's pretty bad. All right. Let me add a little bit of light and a little bit of alcohol so you can appreciate the damage. All right, it's kind of hard with the glare for you to see some of that. All right, so you can still see the original circle of the of the actual sort of depression from the long screw. And this this trace is broken. No, that one is broken. That one is broken. That one is probably broken. That one's definitely broken. Wow, out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six of these are damaged. That's a lot. Usually it's two or three. So I take it back. This one's not going to be easy. <laughs> this one's going to be, this is, this one. Whoa, look how dirty that phone is. Holy. Okay. So the best bet right now, when you know you're facing one that has significant damage, is to take the board out. Um, I'm in too much of a hurry to do that, so I'm not going to do that, but I would re definitely recommend taking the board out. All right, for me, the next step is going to be to tin the traces that I can see. So um, laying my jumpers is going to be a lot easier with some, with some tin on here. So I'm going to use the micro pencil. I think I'll use the FM2032 micro pencil with a 0 0.1 millimeter tip. And I pr think I've filed my tip down so that it's even, even smaller. Now, a lot of the times, if the damage is not horrible, you can get in here and um, just kind of use the solder to kind of get these joints to behave again if they're if they're not horribly broken. I don't think we'll be lucky in this case. These ones are too too bad. Too much the damage is like too deep on this. Okay, so I'm going to start here with this trace right here that's all the way on the edge. And I'm going to actually cut it so that I don't have to deal with this, um, the sort of edges of it. So I really want to have the, the end of it kind of... Nice, so I'm just sort of pressing on this to cut that off. There we go. Okay. All right, so that's ready for a jumper. Let's see if you can see that. I don't know how to make that more clear. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to connect A and B. So the next step is to grab some of my vibrator coil wire.
These these tweezers were fine standby. like a week ago. Oh, those look horrifying. And now they ah, are just they can grab. Yay. All right, back to the grind. Now, again, tinning is what's one of the keys. So I'm going to kind of place my little jumper over there, use the micro pencil to get this thing tinned before I attempt to lay it on the final destination. And sometimes it gets away from you and just sort of disappears when you're, when you're tinning it. Especially when your tweezers suck. Yep, that's pretty bad. That's <laughs> like buried in there now. All right, I'm going to just attach this end here. to the internet. Siri's out on a date. Is it doing that by itself? That is usually an iPad mini home button defect. Siri says that it's not off. It sounded like it was coming from one of the boxes. It could be. All right, perfect jumper. Okay. Jumper number one is done. What? You're going to be in trouble? Uh oh. You're out past your curfew and it's 8.25. Whoops. Is this part of your secret plan to um, procrastinate packing for a trip? I think it's pretty good. No, but I promised we'd be in the car. Whoops. Okay, now this second one looks like it may be okay. I don't know. I don't really trust it. Let's touch it with the iron a little bit. We were thinking about doing some Playdate Plus this summer. Playdate Plus is a Playdate like with a theme where you, where you try to do like one little thing, like the strawberry, strawberry DNA extraction. Find out what Siri that is and shut her up. It's the same person that sent you the water damage phone. Oh, great. Do you think Siri's available? All right, for this next jumper, I definitely want to kind of skip over the, the worst of the damaged area. So I'm going to kind of tin it. Siri not available. Connect to the internet. What's the internet? I would think that Siri would have, in her learning, would have covered the common pronunciation of the word internet. The internet. Siri not available. Connect to the internet. I feel like Siri's had a bad day. <laughs> I feel bad for the mailman. 
Siri was doing Siri this all day long in his car. Connect to the internet. Yeah. <laughs> It's a great way to speed up your mail service. <laughs> mail something with Siri in it. God damn it! Or a great way to like, not get it. Yeah. Or... yeah. Planning to do, I, if I planned anything, you know, the BSOD video would not be on a day where I have, uh, need to go dig up some new tweezers. Oh yes, a new candidate. I see. Where did these just magically appear from? Hmm? Same place where the, ah, these are fantastic. And they just happen to be over there. Huh. Weird. Strange. I told you I didn't break those other ones. <laughs> <laughs> I see how this goes. Okay. All right, this mini is here. Perfect. Thank you very much. So it's fine as far as you know? As far as I can tell you. Okay. Having determined that that's not the one that has Siri talking. That's a big plus. Okay. Good. Okay. I've got the uh, package wrapped, but not labeled for the guy who wasn't a rabbit hole. The guy who was not a rabbit hole? Right, the one you thought oh, was yes. wasn't a rabbit hole? Yes, gotcha. That guy. That's here, and the uh, no fix, no fee. Okay. Yes, I know that guy. Thank that you very much. You okay, perfect. Yay. So you're going to be back... When I'm gone. I will be back Saturday night or Sunday. Probably Saturday night. Okay. If you're going to be up all night Saturday working on stuff. Undoubtedly so. Well, it's the 4th of July, right? I was going over for the late shift if you... Well, um, we might drink margaritas. I don't know. It is, it is a holiday. Well, that sounds great. Oh, it is a holiday, isn't it? Yes. Fireworks. Do you guys have any fireworks? Where are you going for fireworks? I have no idea. Me neither. The cul-de-sac is usually pretty fun in a very highly dangerous way. Yeah, I've had in my brain that we're going away for the weekend, but we're going away for Friday and Saturday morning. Ah, uh, gotcha. We'll be back for the 4th of July. Okay. I mean, what's more fun to do on 4th of July than ship packages? It's an all-American dream. Independence. Celebrate independence by shipping packages. Sounds good. That's right. That's right. That needs a little bit of flux. Honest to goodness, getting in the car and going. I think she's serious this time, guys. I'm not leaving my wallet. Yeah. I felt bad. I didn't see that until like the next day. I was like, oh yeah, it's right here. Shit. Okay, so we're going to move this over here, and now we have done two. Two jumpers. Ah, ah, ah. Simon, don't forget to go with your mom and uh, not get stuck here for a whole weekend and spend the night.
Bye. All right, there we go. It's all about getting them tinned. Tin first. Okay, and that's three. Using the micro pencil, I really have a lot less of the, like once I place them, they now they rarely come back up. They used to come back up. In my other video, when I was just using the 0.2 millimeter tweezers, the tip was just so big and so hot that it would sometimes lift ones and float them away that I'd already placed. All right, so now I'm just sort of moving down the, down the line. Let's see if I can even see where the next one is. about the right tools and even this tip this is not the standard stock tip I have filed this tip so that it will do exactly what I want it to do let's see where I want that to go That's okay.
one I'm not quite a hundred percent sure about it at the top. I'll have to look into that. It's nudged over one one little bit too far. And try to nudge it back. Alright, that's okay. Alright, this flux on here is starting to get pretty gummy. But I think I may only have one left to do. I don't want to weaken that or make it uh, torn where I'm trying to tin it. Okay. This is number five. I'm not sure if I need a number six or not. That would be down now if I had pre-tinned that wire, but I didn't. There we go. Probably good. All right, let's trim the tails off of these and then clean this area up and really assess whether or not we need a six jumper or if that line's okay.
Okay. So I'm cleaning it with alcohol because that flux is just getting really gummy. Oh, one of them came off. I kind of, you know, want to test them a little bit, you know, to make sure they're not like super fragile. If they are, I want to get them stuck down better. Let's maybe, we may have to move that second one there. Okay, I think that that has a good chance of working. Okay, that to me looks like it's worth a try, and then if it does work, we would put epoxy, let it dry and then put epoxy all over it. But I think this line here seems intact. And then this one that I thought might be broken actually is intact. This line is now restored. Let me make sure that has no movement. Yep, that's okay. That one's okay. That one's okay. And that one's okay. Okay, so we have five jumpers placed. And... Oh, we gotta bring back our, uh, that ground line that we need. So remember on this one, since I really um, removed the screw bracket, since it was sort of coming up anyway, uh, now we need to sort of reapply a um, little bit of connection to ground on these uh, capacitors down here. Uh, she's me. One, two, three. Okay. So for that, I can just use some easy to cut braid. See how much thicker a single ply of the braid is compared to the um, vibrator wire? Yeah. 
and evaporate off the alcohol. Okay. Ready to test. Ready to test. Okay. Now sometimes the um, sometimes when you've done a hardware repair and you fixed your BSOD trace damage, then sometimes the phone will come right back and you'll be able to uh, save the data that's on the phone. Other times and lately it seems like it's been more like this. The actual trace damage corrupted the flash memory like during the event of the, um, you know, the actual trace getting mashed into the, the screw mashing down the traces. Um, so in that case, the phone will still blue screen but it'll come back with a restore. I'm just going to leave that camera off. Power button. Be quiet. Sam? Sam, eyeballs. All right, moment of truth. Let's see. Let's see if this will continue to blue screen and then it'll need to be restored because I think the trace damage is done. I think this is this repair is good. Um, if it fails to restore, then we would look back at it. Um, but hopefully it'll come back up without needing to be restored. Let's see. thinking about it, just thinking, cranking back to the vault. Yay! And it's a normal phone again. Lock screen. So, uh, you know, in my experience, we'll test out all the functions, but um, the, the phone's going to be okay. So that's how you do a trace damage repair. The secret is not excavating more than you need to. This one's not a great example of that because it had a whole bunch of traces damaged from the get-go. Um, and then the other secret of it is to, you know, kind of tin, tin your traces and then, you know, if you're having trouble, also tin your, your vibrator wire. And that's all there is to it.